I'm Mary Carr. I'm Christopher Robinson. And this is Poetry Fix. Anti-poetry is a kind of poetry that uses language that's rough as a diner waitress's, right? It's yeah, annihilates if it hits real poetry, right? Right. It's sort of like, and why, why would this, this guy Nicanor Para is one of the champions of it. Why would poets not want to be pretty or beautiful? What's, what's the big deal about wanting to be anti-beauty? Well, as you said before, uh, poets have a complex about being sissies, maybe, right? Yeah, we sound tougher. <laughs> right? We sound tougher in these yeah. poems, more monosyllabic. Catullus said, just because you think my verses are pretty doesn't mean that I won't, you know, up your be proper and down to your that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Up your mm and down your mm. One of my favorite poems of his, which we're not going to read, is The Viper. It says, for years I was doomed to worship a contemptible woman, work night and day to feed and clothe her, perform several crimes, misdemeanors, uh, for fear of a scornful glance from her mm -hmm. bewitching eyes. You know? So instead of this love poem about, oh, how gorgeous uh, my woe man is. Right. But this poem is a kind of metaphysical poem called Piano Solo. Piano Solo by Nicanor Parra who was a theoretical physicist by trade. Since man's life is nothing but a bit of action at a distance, a bit of foam shining inside a glass. Since trees are nothing but moving trees, nothing but chairs and tables in perpetual motion. Since we ourselves are nothing but beings, as the Godhead itself is nothing but God. Now that we do not speak solely to be heard, but so that others may speak, and the echo precede the voice that produces it. Since we do not even have the consolation of a chaos in the garden that yawns and fills with air, a puzzle we must solve before our death so we may nonchalantly resuscitate later on when we have led women to excess. Since there is also a heaven in hell, permit me to propose a few things. I wish to make a noise with my feet. I want my soul to find its proper body. I really love the sense of the metaphysical that he has, and that it's, um, it seems instantiated through paradox. That line, there's a heaven and hell, or, or this idea of, um, what is that earlier line about? Nothing, it's nothing but a bit of action at a distance, a, yeah. a bit of foam shining inside of glass, which sounds almost like sperm and, and, <laughs> uh, and in vitro fertilization, but also like champagne, right? It right. has this kind of coarse feeling to it, but also something, trees are nothing but moving trees, nothing but chairs and tables, as though those chairs and tables live in, uncarved inside the living trees. Uh, he's, of course, a scientist. He's right. interested in the ways time reverts and the echo precedes the voice. But it doesn't, it's not just a regurgitation of, um, you know, philosophical ideas uh, slapped together in lines and called a poem. Uh, it, it reaches some other place by the end where he's putting all these ideas in service of this, this final, I wish to make a noise with my feet. Which you know, is which is, a, isn't that a great a line? Small and wonderful wish. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like you're stamping like a mad toddler, mm -hmm. but you're, or you're dancing. Right. I want my soul to find its proper body. And somehow both of those, the, the very physical and the very abstract and the very important and large and the very small, are put on an equal plane at the end there. Which is what yeah. Nicanor Parra does. We love him. Mary Carr. Christopher Robinson. Poetry Fix. Forever. I'm Mary. I'm Mary Carr. <laughs> I don't I'm know Mary, who I am. <laughs> I'm Mary Carr. I don't know who this yeah. is. This is Christopher Robinson. <laughs> all right, all right.